Hi there, guys. Good morning. Today, we're going to continue working on our unit six, Fraction Concepts and Operations. Our teaching point for today is, I can compare unit fractions using the greater than, less than, or equal to notation. So that means that today we're going to be working with these symbols to compare unit fractions. I know that you have already uh, worked with this symbol before, but this time we're going to take a look at how this work when we apply them to unit fractions. So let's see. Today is Monday, May 11, 2020. Our lesson is titled for today, Compare Unit Fractions. I encourage you now to pause the video and get to copy the date, lesson name, and teaching point in your notebook before we get to work on our quick practice. So, being that done, let's jump in right away to our quick practice. In our quick practice for today, we have a word problem. It says, Nina has eight pencils and Ramon has five pencils. Who has more pencils? You're going to use a drawing and compare using the greater than, less than, or equal to symbols to show your work. Right here, I share with you the answer. Nina has more pencils. You might say, that's pretty easy, right? But this exercise actually helps us to refresh a little bit this concept that we worked some time ago. So right here, in order for me to represent the situation, I will have uh, two labels, one for Ramon and another one for Nina. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to represent the amount of pencil that each one of them already have. So for Ramon, we will have five pencil, right? And for Nina, we already have eight. Now, in order for me to visually see who has more, right there I can see that when I reach five, which is the top uh, amount that Ramon has, I see that I have three more. Actually, Nina has three more than him. So that means that she already has more than him. Now, if I use the greater than, less than, or equal to notation, how might that look like? That will look like this. So since eight is greater than five, then that means that Nina has more pencils than Ramon. This is why we're going to also work uh, comparing unit fractions today. Since we're going to be working with unit fractions, we need to keep in mind that a unit fraction is whatever fraction, or actually a special fraction, because the only thing that identifies them or actually makes them different compared to the other types is that they always have a one on top. That is why they're named unit fraction because they hold a number one in the denominator's place. Take a look at that, right? So since we're working with fractions as well, fractions have two parts, nominator and denominator. So denominator is the top number of a fraction that tells how many equal parts are being described, how many of those that we have available are coming into action. However, we have the denominator, which is the bottom number of a fraction that tells how many equal parts are in the whole. Now, um, we have seen this symbol before, greater than the, the opening of the symbol will be pointing out at the greater amount. And then we're going to have that the point, let's say, uh, will be pointing at the lesser amount. So how can I compare unit fractions? We already took a look at this situation right here where we had one eight compared to one four. So which one is greater? We have the same size circle. We have unit fractions. But we can see right here that the denominator in this case is greater than this one. So since this one is greater, then that might lead me to assume that this fraction is greater. But this doesn't happen um, that way when we work with fractions. Let's pay attention to this. In this one, Let's say that we have a quarter, one fourth of this circle right here. You see, if we take a look at the same piece in the other circle, we're going to see 
that we don't have the same size. This size is not even bigger than the one for that we have in this one. It's actually half of it. And if we take a look, we have eight pieces right here. So that means that our whole circle is divided into eight pieces. On this one, other, otherwise, then we have only four pieces, meaning that our circle is only divided into four pieces. Now, it is obvious to see that the more partitions I have, the smaller my pieces will be. If we take a look at this one, in which we have eight pieces total, we have many pieces, but, we, but the size they hold are actually less than on this case. So keep in mind that when we compare unit fraction, the bigger fraction, actually the greater fraction, will be the one with the smallest denominator, in this case, the smaller one, right? So between these two, one fourth is greater than one eighth. There you go. Now, in your student activity book, you are going to take a look at this pattern. Right here, we have a fraction bar that actually represents different unit fractions, right? If you take a look at inside, we have different unit fractions. And right that side, we have, we actually are partitioning a whole number, which is one. We still can represent whole numbers into fractions, as you can see, two divided by two, three divided by three. That means if we divide the same element by itself, we're going to have a one as a result. Now, if you take a look at the pattern, the pattern is increasing right here. We are dividing, but the pieces are multiplying themselves. We have more pieces, but take a look at what happens on the size. As we increase the partitions, I mean, as the denominator increases, the more pieces we have. But that also means that the size of every piece is actually smaller. All right. So let's take a look. Today you are going to be working with situations where you are going to need to compare unit fractions. In this case, we have one eighth being compared to one ninth. So which one is greater? As we saw before, taking that in mind, the lesser, or actually the, the, the less times we divide any whole number, then that means that the, that the greater these pieces will be. Since this one eighth is only divided the whole eighth time, and on this case we have this whole being divided nine times, that means that on this side, one eighth, the pieces will be bigger. If we get to use the chart that we had before, and we compare these two fractions, they, are, they actually represent one whole, you see? So they have the same size. But pay a close attention to the unit fraction they hold. If we pay attention to this one, for example, one ninth, we can see that one piece of this reaches this portion of one eighth. So as we can see right here, the rectangles that represent one eighth on each one are actually bigger than the pieces that represent one ninth. So right there we can see that one eighth is actually greater than one ninth. But what happens? Can we compare more than two fractions at the same time? Yes, of course. Let's take a look. In this case, we have three fractions, three unit fractions, one eleventh, one eighth, and one ninth. I use this, actually I, use, I took some of these um, patterns that we already saw on the previous chart so you can actually take a look at the sizes and how they resemble here. So we have one eighth, we have one ninth, and then we have one eleven. As we said before, as we increase the denominator, we're going to have more pieces, but also the size of those pieces will be smaller. If we take a look, the greater, actually the greatest in this case, between the three, will be one eighth. Because if we take a look at the size of one eighth, it's actually 
greater than the size of one nine, and then greater than the size of one eleven. Right? If we represent that using the greater than, less than, or equal to notation, then we will have something like this. We will have that one eighth is greater than one nine, and one nine is greater than one eleven. And that way, we get to compare the three of them. Keep in mind, guys, it is really important that when you're comparing unit fractions, the greater fraction will be the one where the denominator is smaller, right? Or smallest in this case. Always the smallest denominator will be the greatest fraction. So on your independent work today, you're going to be comparing six different situations their unit fractions as, as well. So take a look at the denominators. The one with the smaller denominator will be the, square, the greatest fraction. Now, complete this statement. When comparing to the unit fractions, the fraction with the smaller denominator is, oops, I just gave away the answer. <laughs> so on the second page, write the unit fractions in order from least to greatest. The same way, that I did when I have three fractions, you are going to do this time. And there you have two word problems where you need to compare fractions as well. I don't show you the real page right here, like assign, assign you a page on your student activity book because I'm using the digital version. I, the pages on the digital version and the physical one that you have don't match. So we're working on our lesson two from unit six. So take a look at what this exercise might represent in your book. So you don't have to copy this in your notebook, right? At the end, we are going to help our puzzle penguin. As you know, he's always a kind of lost. So we're here to help him. So take a look at the situation that he has here. I'll help him out, writing a response to puzzle penguin. Please provide the most detail that you can using the vocabulary and words that we have learned so far regarding to fractions. So that will do it for today, guys. I hope, I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions, don't doubt on reaching me. Right? Bye-bye, and see you next time.